Hi, and welcome to my podcast, Cleaning Up the Mental Mess. I'm your host, Dr. Caroline Leaf, and I am thrilled to talk to you today about laughing and how laughing decreases stress and improves mental health. But before we begin, I just want to remind you that this podcast is for educational purposes, and if you need medical advice, please contact the appropriate medical professional. If you want to help me with my podcast, I would love it if you would subscribe to wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe to my podcast, Cleaning Up the Mental Mess, and leave me a five-star review and share my podcast with friends and family. And don't forget, if you subscribe to my newsletter, you get the podcast written in blog form, plus you'll be up to date on all the things that are happening and all it's so much free stuff that I give you to help you with your mental health and follow me on social media Dr. Caroline Leaf for those daily tips that will really help you to manage your mental health. Just a note before we begin today's episode if you enjoy listening to my podcast and want to get access to exclusive ad-free bonus episodes sign up today to become a Patreon member. Every month I will be releasing special bonus podcasts on topics you have requested, doing live Q&As and more. When you sign up today, you will get immediate access to two podcasts on topics I think are so important and pertinent, how to become less emotionally reactive, and how to capture and edit thoughts before they become harmful. You will also have access to exclusive digital downloads and become part of a special community. Sign up today at patreon.com forward slash Dr. Caroline Leaf. The link will also be in the show notes. So now let's dive into laughing. All humans do it. But let's break it down for a moment. Have you ever thought about why emitting sounds from our mouths gives us so much joy? Even when those sounds can sometimes come out sounding like a cackle or a grunt or a wheeze or even a snort. Yet when we do this, we are most likely filled with joy, although there are times when people laugh out of discomfort or shock, anger and sadness as well. In all cases, there is something about laughing that relieves us It releases stress and sometimes heightens our mood in drastically wonderful ways. I was born in Zimbabwe and grew up in South Africa. And South Africans are really well known for their sense of humor, making jokes about everything. Maybe it's a coping mechanism and that's what it can be. But seeing the funny side of things helps you get through stressful situations. And that's something that's just become part of my my life. And it's a little bit part of my personality as well. Maybe that's part of yours too is I tend to find, make little jokes about things and see funny things and in, in things that aren't even funny. My kids often tell me, oh gosh, another mom's joke. And, you know, they like make, find everything so funny. And, you know, maybe you do, maybe you don't. doesn't make you better or worse or me better or worse. It's just how you are. But laughter is definitely a great and important part of our being a human. As much as we need to cry, and I did a podcast on crying, which was really popular, and, you know, maybe go listen to that. We also need to laugh. So, first of all, what even is laughter? We can actually break this down physiologically. Laughter is literally a sound that is coming from our lungs and an exhalation of air. Our muscles contort on our face, and it's considered a somewhat involuntary or automatic response to some sort of stimulation. There are some studies that show that humans laugh 17 times a day on average, and if you think of it, laughter is literally a form of communication. It kind of breaks the ice, it calms down situations, it's incredibly enjoyable, It can bond people. It's part of our language. And so it's also a part of how we understand connection with other humans. I'll put some links in the show notes about this too. We love to laugh and it makes sense. It activates so many reward systems in the brain. I'll break it down scientifically as to what happens in our brain and bodies as we laugh. So studies have shown that when we laugh, it's heavily involved with the limbic system. And the limbic system is the part of the brain that's involved in our behavioral and emotional responses. Okay, so the limbic system responds to the energy of the mind. Remember, I always talk about the mind-brain-body connection, our psychoneurobiology. Our mind is our aliveness, our driving force, and the brain and body respond. So when we are laughing, our limbic system is responding. So the decision to laugh is coming from our mind in response to a stimulus 
and that laughter generates energy through the brain and the limbic system is activated. And because the limbic system is activated in our behavioral and emotional responses. So the limbic system is responding to this energy of the mind and then it actually helps memory storage. So laughter actually is a way of kind of building in a resilience that improves our memory storage. So your memory improves with laughter and also retrieving memory. So building and calling up memories and memories are inside thought trees. So when we recall a memory, we recall the thought and then we recall the details and the details of that thought are the, are the memories. So laughing, just to say that again, I mean, I don't know if you knew this, but when you laugh a lot, you're actually improving your memory, storage and retrieval. And also helps to, uh, to balance emotional states. So emotions are, are warning signals and are a type of memory that we build into our thoughts. So it's the feeling associated with the data of the thoughts that we are building. So you get emotion, data memories and emotional memories inside our thoughts. And basically, when we laugh, we are balancing that. We are actually helping to, to create a nice balance in our emotional states. If we want to be healthier mentally and physically, one of the best things we can possibly do is get several hours of quality sleep every night. The brain and body heal itself when we sleep. It really is one of the most amazing processes, even if you're not conscious when it happens. But I know it's hard to get good quality sleep sometimes. Your mind keeps you awake, life is stressful, and there are often a hundred anxious reasons why you can't fall asleep at night. Thankfully, there are also ways we can improve our sleep quality and overall health, including taking magnesium. Believe it or not, around 75% of people don't have enough magnesium. No wonder so many people have sleep problems. But please do not run to the store to buy the first magnesium supplement you find. Most magnesium supplements use only the two cheapest synthetic forms. And since they're not full spectrum, they won't support better sleeping habits. There are actually seven unique forms of magnesium and you must get all of them if you want to experience its calming, sleep enhancing effects. That's why I recommend Magnesium Breakthrough by Bio Optimizers. Simply take two capsules before you go to bed and you'll be amazed at how much better you sleep and how much more rested you feel when you wake up. For an exclusive offer for my listeners, go to www.magbreakthrough.com forward slash leaf and use Dr. Leaf 10 during checkout to save 10% on your order. The link and details will be in the show notes. The limbic system also becomes very active when we self-regulate and we should be self-regulating all the time. A lot of what I teach, in fact, everything I teach is driven by self-regulation. We can self-regulate every 10 seconds while we're consciously awake, which means that we can pretty much pay attention all the time to how we are responding. So when we are self-regulating, we activate the limbic system to really work hard for us and it helps us, it feeds back into our mind when the limbic system is activated by self-regulation and then this great relation, this, this great helpful relationship is set up. So you start the self-regulation, it activates a good pattern in the limbic system and the limbic system then feeds back into the mind and we have this really great positive cycle being built up where the one is helping the other. And when we laugh, we actually improve this whole response. So laughter also helps us with self-regulation. So when we self-regulate, we also tend to pay more focused attention to what the non-conscious mind which is operating 24-7, which is the most intelligent part of us, which is driving how we function, which stores all our wisdom, plus every experience that we, that we have had since a certain point in the womb. And so basically the non-conscious mind is sending up messages into the conscious mind through the subconscious mind. And when we laugh a lot, we actually activate the limbic system. And when this whole thing gets set up, we become more attentive to the messages from our non-conscious mind. So we become more introspective and we become wiser. So that means our intellectual functions also improve because we draw on those when we stimulate the limbic system in this way. So the limbic system is involved with our emotional and behavioral responses and that we need to survive because we need wisdom and intelligence to survive. So it's a great way for improving and developing our 
sense of peace and our sense of survival. So, for example, the limbic system is connected to is also connected to feeding, reproduction, caring for our young, fight and flight, freeze and fawn response. So, laughing is literally one of our intrinsic human behaviors that helps to protect us. Now, I'm not sure if you knew all of that about laughter, but there's quite a lot of interesting information behind that. And it's it's amazing to think that something such fun and something that makes you feel so amazing is also improving memory and it's improving our basic survival and developing our wisdom and all those amazing things. On a neurochemical level, laughter changes neurochemicals in the brain in the frontal lobe, which is associated with emotions, but also affects other parts of the brain. So its impact is widespread. Laughter has an effect similar to, similar to well, when you laugh, you basically are stimulating natural antidepressants or natural benzodiazepines. In other words, things that help us to feel calmer. And so it releases, it activates, for example, things like serotonin, which helps us feel calm. Dopamine, which not only helps us learn and focus, but it's also, as we know, linked to the reward system, that it helps us to also have better memory. It also stimulates things like anandamide, which is known as the bliss hormone, which makes us feel that intense sensation of bliss which when we have a good laugh. So laughing activates the release of, of oxytocin as well, and oxytocin is often called the empathy hormone. And then laughter can also influence endorphins. The endorphins secreted by, uh, by the act of laughing can help when people are uncomfortable or in a, de- a depressed mood. So it's quite a lot of things. There's serotonin and oxytocin and, and dopamine and the balance between dopamine and serotonin and endorphins. All of those working towards making us feel better, calmer, less sort of overwhelmed, increasing empathy, helping us with bonding and helping us when we feel uncomfortable or feeling sad or depressed or anxious. Laughter also reduces the level of of the stress hormone cortisol. Cortisol is very good for us, but it's got to be released in the right amounts, and it's got to be balanced with DHEA, which is known as the mother hormone. So, um, So laughter actually reduces toxic levels of the stress hormone like cortisol, epinephrine, which is adrenaline, dopamine, and growth hormone. So it gets the right amounts of all of those hormones. So it reduces, if you have too much cortisol and too much adrenaline, that's not good for you. So laughter can bring bring it back into balance. If you have too much dopamine and too much growth, growth hormone or too little, that's not good. So either, and laughter helps to balance those hormones. So it actually helps us balance our hormones, which is fantastic. It also increases the level of health enhancing hormones like endorphins. I mean, these are a lot of incredible effects. Laughing literally also increases the amount of oxygen you have in your lungs. And this in turn increases the amount of oxygen that flows through your body and your blood. And this then goes to your heart and lungs. And this then increases the amount of oxygen in your brain. And when you have more oxygen in your brain, not only is your brain going to function more efficiently, but your ability to make decisions and reduce impulsivity increases. So your decision-making capability gets better and impulsivity drops off. And when you have more oxygen, that also helps to release the endorphins, the healing chemicals in your brain. So endorphins are often called the feel-good hormones. And so when you laugh, you're getting like a large burst of these endorphins, these great feel-good hormones. And the, the increase in oxygen and blood flow also causes any tension in the muscles to relax and helps you to think more clearly because we are mind, brain, and body. So if our muscles are all tense, it can also affect your thinking. You know, when I'm teaching and I'm standing on the stage for hours and I get so involved in what I'm teaching, I find that I tense my feet muscles and I start feeling tired and, and I, it doesn't hit me till I get off the stage. It's such a weird thing. But that exhaustion is... Go, go, literally when I stop talking flows from my feet all the way through my body and I get hit by this wave of exhaustion and I have actually learned to giggle and make a joke and the minute I do that I can feel the tension releasing because all that oxygen is flowing to the muscles specifically in this case blood and, and oxygen to the muscles of my feet which actually helps so in this way it can also be a pain reliever because when we build up muscle tension it can actually help block the pain and then when it's released it releases pent-up emotion. So, I mean, this is why we call laughter medicine. I mean, you've heard that before, that laughter is literally like medicine. 
Laughing has also been found to cause the release of neuropeptides, and a neuropeptide is are short strings of amino acids that are synthesized in and released by neurons or glia in the brain, which are a different types of cells in the brain, and which affect the function of the nervous system. You are basically making neuropeptides right now of this information I'm giving you because you're building this information into your brain in the form of neuropeptides. And so we need lots of neuropeptides. And when we laugh, we actually, there's an increased release of these neuropeptides that help. So it helps your, your nervous system and your to work more efficiently. So that's really beneficial in fighting toxic stress because we need lots of neuropeptides to help build healthier thoughts around the toxic thoughts and to replace the toxic thoughts. So if we think about the mind-brain-body connection, we know that what we think and feel will also affect our body. So any negative thoughts or sad thoughts can harm our body. And so, so therefore, if we, and I've speak about this so much on my podcast, that when we have our, those toxic thoughts inside of our brain with the memories, the thoughts being made of memories, those affect the entire, they're damaging the brain, they, they're causing inflammation, they're affecting cortisol, they're affecting all the dopamine, serotonin, everything is negatively affected. And that makes us feel physically sick. I mean, I've shown in my research that even right down to the level of DNA, you get things called telomeres, which are the ends of chromosomes. Their functionality is based on how we are managing our minds. When we're feeling very unmanaged in our minds and we have a lot of depression and anxiety, that's those are warning signals. They're not doesn't mean you've got a brain disease if you feel depression and anxiety. It's basically if you look at it this way, it's a warning signal telling you that there's something going on. And it affects the functionality of the of the telomeres. So if we don't listen to the message of the depression and the anxiety and, and see it as a signal and grab it and, and try and find out why we're feeling that way, the telomeres don't work so well. And then our depression and sadness can increase. So we, the signals get louder and louder and louder, which leads to, which is the increasing depression and anxiety, which is our bodies telling us even louder, shouting at us to respond. And so laughing can help to break that cycle. Laughing when you laugh, it can break that cycle, but laughing also has an effect on the body. It, it has a great effect on telomeres. It helps us to build healthier cells because telomeres are involved in building healthy cells. So there's just, I mean, there's just so many fantastic benefits from this simple laughter, especially when we're laughing with, you know, that, that we're laughing with, our, we laugh with our whole body and we get, you know, throw yourself into this. Are you looking to make a change and eat healthier? Splendid Spoon takes all the work out of what you're eating next. With over 50 meal options, you can choose from smoothies, grain and noodle bowls, soups, wellness shots and more. Splendid Spoon offers four starting plans. Their most popular is the signature plan that includes breakfast, lunch and a signature reset product, which is perfect when we get off track in our wellness journey and overindulge on high calorie nutrient depleted foods. The Reset Soups are low in calories, yet contain vitamins and minerals that are easy on your tummy. Splendid Spoon believes in plant-based eating as the single most effective tool we have to feel our best day in and day out. When you make a habit out of plant-based eating, it can help you to be the best version of yourself, with side benefits like more energy, weight loss, improved sleep and better skin. I personally love their mint chip smoothie, which I drink in the morning to give me the energy and nutrients I need to get my brain and body ready for the day. It is incredibly delicious and packed full of protein, fiber, and other important nutrients. Get started and save $35 on your first order of delicious plant-based meals at splendidspoon.com slash drleaf. That's splendidspoon.com slash drleaf to save $35 on your first order. It's only $6.66 per meal. The link and details will be in the show notes. So all of these things with, that I'm telling you about with laughter combine to increase our resilience against toxic stress. Laughter can also help us strengthen the response that the limbic system ha has when we get into a trauma, a triggered situation where we move into the flight, fright, freeze or fawn. When we, when we laugh, practice laughing more, literally practice laughing more, watch funny movies, read joke books, you know, spend time building laughter into our life. All these hormonal and brain changes 
and body changes happen that increase your resilience. So when you're in a very toxic situation, that laughter has changed your functionality and your structure of your mind, brain and body to the point where it actually helps you become more resilient in those situations and helps you get through them more effectively. So we all know that when we laugh at something humorous, our moods are lightened and we feel infinitely better. See, laughter creates a lightness, a change, a shift in all this neurophysiology. When something makes us laugh like a funny video or something a person in our life said or did, then we, we're also giving our mind a rest. I mean, I love this. Laughter gives your mind a rest. Have you ever felt at the end of a day or at the end of whatever that you're, like your brain is tired? I often find myself saying this when I've been working excessively and I don't realize I'm tired until I stop. I don't know if you experienced that. And, you know, my brain is tired and I find watching something funny or making a joke or laughing at myself or someone telling me something funny, immediately I feel rested. Laughter helps you to rest. It's a great way of resting. A friend of mine a while ago who's a therapist tells me, and told me how she manages not to get broken down by listening to people's deepest pains and sadnesses all day. She said that every morning while she gets ready and drives to work, she listens to something, a podcast or that will make her laugh. She used that time to focus her mind on funny things and give her mind a rest and a break before starting the day. And this allows her to prepare and not, only to, or not, and not to be already worn out by the time she gets to work. And I tell you this, something that I used to, I didn't listen to podcasts every day, but I used to make sure that when I went into my therapy room with my patients and I practiced for 25 years, that I was rested in my brain and definitely having a good laugh and having some fun. My husband's always cracking a joke. So it's always got plenty of opportunities to laugh. I would make sure that that, that was part of my routine for giving my mind a rest. With all the neurochemicals and endorphins that begin to flow in and around your brain when you laugh, this can help with feelings of depression, sadness, and anxiety, as I've explained. Sometimes this will come as a response in situations when people laugh, not because something is funny, but maybe when they're angry or sad. Laughing can literally help with the grief or the frustration and the anger. I have a, actually have a friend who, when often when I first met her and she would tell me about something really sad or something very, you know, like a serious situation, she'd have a smile on her face. And she'd have little giggles. And I realized very soon that, you know, this is, was her way of dissipating that energy build up. So it's like crying dissipates energy. Laughter can dissipate energy. Obviously, if you're in the midst of a, you know, traumatic situation and it's inappropriate or wherever it's inappropriate, you'd have to judge that situation. But if it's, you know, sometimes people do do that to, to deal with the grief or the frustration and the anger. February is the month of love and one of the best gifts you can give yourself is good health. But what health looks like for you may be completely different to what it looks like for someone else. There is no one size fits all. This is why I love Noom, which takes a different approach to health and eating. The program is driven by a singular mission, to help as many people as possible live healthier and happier lives through behavior change. They use the latest in proven behavioral science to empower people to take control of their health for good. And through a combination of psychology, technology, and human coaching, their platform has helped millions of users meet their personal wellness goals. With Noom, I have learned so much about the relationship between what I eat and what I want in life, including how to better manage stress and mood through my food choices. I personally love that the program is so easy to use and empathic. Indeed, they don't believe in restricting what you can or can't eat. Instead, Noom gives you the knowledge and the wisdom you need to make informed choices that not only fit your lifestyle, but also help you reach your goals. An off day is totally okay and you won't send you off course because Noom gently helps you get back on track. Sign up for your trial and get psychology-based support and motivation to reach your goals at noom.com slash drleaf. That's noom.com slash drleaf to sign up for your trial. The link and details will be in the show notes. There's also some connection to this decrease of stress caused by laughter and telomere length, as I mentioned. So there's actually established research showing that, as I mentioned already, telomeres are a proxy for how we're managing our mind. And laughter is a beautiful way of adding to our toolbox of managing our mind. You know, I talk about the neurocycle, the system that I've developed for helping us manage our mind. Laughter is as a a fantastic technique to build into step five, which is the action step that you take each day when you do the neurocycle. 
So as you work through the hard work, you could add in of the first four steps, your fifth step, you could add laughter in as one of your active reaches to do during the course of the day. So uh, laughter can keep us anchored. You know, sometimes maybe you're working on something like the inner critic where you really are hammering yourself. So, you you know, you may be doing a 63-day cycle, which is the time it takes to rewire the mind, brain, and body, which is based on the research I've done. And you're busy working through the neurocycle daily over 63 days. Each day you need a little action. So whatever work you've done that day, you could then, and let's say that it's the inner critic you're working on, and in that particular day using the five steps, you find that you are saying, a particular statement to yourself that is very negative. Your active reach that day could be each time that you say this negative thing, you're going to look at something funny on TikTok or something that's going to make you laugh. And that's your action where you force yourself, instead of being the inner critic, you actually build the laughter in as your little activity. So I am actually doing a paper. I'm writing up a lot of scientific papers on my research, which included looking at telomeres. So we will have that up on my web page. In the meantime, I have the white paper there. And you can also find out more about telomeres and how managing our mind affects them in my latest book, Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess. Now, there are more and more psychologists and mental health professionals out there in the world who are promoting a type of laughing therapy, which I just absolutely love. The idea behind laughter therapy is to teach humor as a coping mechanism. So like I said, laughter can be an act of reach, the first step. With my patients, I would always give them little activities to do when they left therapy within the, the cycle of the neurocycle. And laughter was always one of them. Finding something funny to laugh at was always one of them. So in conclusion, laughing is cathartic. It makes us feel joy. It relieves tension. It becomes an emotional release. So laugh more. It's literally therapy. Find out what makes you laugh and expose yourself to it more and more often. In fact, I'm going to challenge you to do a 63-day cycle where you train yourself to bring laughter into your life, to build it in as an automatic behavioral response, wire it into your brain as an actual thought tree, and build that resilience in where you practice building laughter into your life. So find out what makes you laugh and expose yourself to it more often. Do this 63-day challenge to build laughing into your life. And find out maybe it's reading funny memes, watching funny shows, going to comedy shows, spending more time with funny people. Whatever it takes, you do it. Just recently, we were in South Africa visiting my family. And one of my nieces is just, I mean, I'm laughing now as I'm thinking about it. She had us laughing the entire day on one of the days. And she was telling us about all these really quite scary situations that are happening in South Africa with the, you know, the the different, obviously with COVID and then the different dangerous situations that are happening with all the problems there. But the way she phrased, as she told us some, as we were were having some serious discussion, she was able to go through a process of rephrasing it and then saying something funny that then just helped to relieve the tension. So we got through a really heavy discussion through her making these incredibly funny little comments and rephrasing. And it just made us all at the end of the day, even though we'd had these heavy discussions, we all felt better because we had laughed so much to relieve the tension. So I hope you'll take up the challenge and I hope you've got excited about laughter. There's so much more, but I think I've told you enough to make you want to laugh. So homework from now on, do the 63 day challenge and build laughing into your life. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to next time. I hope you found today's podcast interesting and helpful. If you want more tips and help with managing anxiety, depression, and mental health, be sure to visit my website at drleaf.com and to sign up for my weekly newsletter where I also include a schedule of my speaking events and so much more. And follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Just look for Dr. Caroline Leaf. Also, I love seeing all your posts on social media about this podcast. I love seeing what resonates with you and what you've learned. So be sure to continue posting and tagging me and letting me know what you think and how these tips worked out for you. And don't forget, leave a review and keep spreading the word about this podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I really hope you learned something new and helpful. Till then... I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf.
This podcast represents the opinions of myself and my guests. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for educational and informational purposes only. Please consult your healthcare professional for any individual medical questions you may have. While we make every effort to ensure that the information we are sharing is accurate, we welcome any comments, suggestions or corrections of errors.